There we go. Ari and I were just talking about computer glitches, and that's all. That was I'm down to the wire. Today. That that was right there at the finish line. Here we're here. <laughs> but you did. You slid right in there. So, so first of all, and I meant to ask you this earlier, but then we started talking, and and you guys are going to love this show today. Um, but how do I pronounce? So it's Ari, and it's really Aristomenus. Is that right? Right, it's Aristomenes Capoinus. Ari is way easier. Aristomenes Capoinus. Okay, but I'm so Irish. I could have been an O'Brien, but dad, you know, <laughs> got first pick on names. So I think Ari O'Brien would have been a little bit easier. All right, we're just going to go with Ari. Thank you for that. Yeah, I thought I had it nailed and I wasn't even close. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm just so. If you follow Vengresso, you might have already heard Ari, who looked a lot different before he had the fire haircut. <laughs> we're gonna yes. talk, we'll, we'll talk about that, although I love it. Um, you were on uh, Bernie Borges, our, our uh, chief success officer's podcast um, calling Growth Marketing Through Hyperpersonalization, which I want to talk about because, I mean, obviously there's so much noise. There's so much junk out there right now that we're not going to listen unless we think someone's speaking directly to us. But let me tell you a little bit about Ari. And then I'm going to go small because my internet is awesome as usual. Uh, but you're a revenue marketing technologist. So you're going to have to explain exactly what that is. You're part of NVIDIA, which they started I mean, NVIDIA was like the creator of the GPU. Isn't that right? Correct. NVIDIA. We, um, we are a recent acquisition ourselves in Mellanox to start this new networking business unit. Um, it's NVIDIA's whole uh, push into the data center space for modernization, injection of AI there. And it's huge, uh, really huge transformation of the data center realm, They're getting us beyond uh, CPU and GPU to DPU, yeah. essentially. It's wild. To, to, to GPU. DPU, no. data center processing data center unit, is processing. The new unit of measurement. It, we're, uh, things are huge now. Yeah. See, all right. So we're just going to jump right into that. I'm going to make myself small here and we're going to jump right into that. And uh, here we go, like this and like this. And then we're going to switch around because no one wants to see me. They want to see you. There we go. All right. So unpack that a little bit. What What is the difference between all these initials? <laughs> It, absolutely. So, you know, you had computer processing units it, 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 to a degree for a period of time and tell you how fast everything's working. You know, you had servers and then we're in the cloud and the cloud is actually somebody else's computer somewhere. Yeah. Typically a data center. Everything is relying on data centers now. And as it's, things get bigger and bigger, faster, and faster and smarter and smarter, we've yeah. gone beyond single system units of measure in our networking to data center processing units. And data center yeah. processing units now, we've got network cards with computers on them, AI injected into them. It, huge, huge, huge realm. Um, yeah. Getting beyond legacy closed sourced uh, hardware and software packages to true open source plug and play, what have you, whatever you want to get screaming fast data center processing units for this okay. whole virtual world we now live in. Right, right. Okay, so someone is asking, what's the topic today? I know I just kind of jumped in with the hair and the name and <laughs> the like. The initial, topic is uh, but... the topic is quarantine life, appeasing your son, and uh, talking to great people out in the world on our computers, so they can actually talk to adults. <laughs> exactly. There we go. Um, yeah, it's you know topically what sales leaders must know about sales driven marketing. But I think what and and our podcast with you was um, let me see if I can find it here. Growth marketing through hyper personalization. What I'm yeah. fascinated with and what you're so knowledgeable about is a couple things. First of all, you know our our in my humble opinion, our sales teams can be our biggest marketing asset, but the two barely talk to each other. Um, you know, some, some companies are figuring it out and they, they've got the sales and marketing alignment, but above and beyond that, you know, we've got to be providing our salespeople with the right content that they can share at the right time to the right people. And above and beyond that, there's all this technology and there's ways of doing it. And so, that's kind of where I want to launch you into is what is this 
hyper personalization? How can it blend marketing and sales together? Kind of what what is the future of sales, especially right now during during COVID and everything that's going on? Yeah, I think you hit it on the head by saying that sales is really your, your biggest uh, marketing uh, execution arm you have to a degree. Um, you know, it, it's interesting when we talk sales marketing alignment. That yeah. alignment is either absolutely no alignment, uh, fractured organization where the two don't mingle whatsoever and kind of hate each other, to yeah. okay, we marketing to SCO or sales kickoff. And we talked about target accounts. Okay, ready, break, let's go. And then the next SCO comes around. Okay, what was done with target accounts? Well, I, I don't know. Let's look at the list and see where we ended up. Um, and then you get yeah. to uh, monthly check-ins, quarterly check-ins. I run a weekly integrated pipeline analysis meeting, take the heads from each org and get them around the table. But the fact is the more you can get real time aligned, the more yeah. you can get this execution in the hands of the person who's on the phone talking to the prospects or talking to the customer to prevent churn, um, the, the more success you're gonna have therein. So I refer to it as sales driven digital marketing. With the technology yeah. we have in play now, and I'll get back to hyper personalization, but the yeah, tech yeah. we have in play now, it's really easy to plug into, say, a Salesforce lead record execution options for the person on the phone to realize, okay, this person came in with a personal email address, but I right. talked to them. They're a great fit. They're uh, evaluating us against competitor Widget Co., and they're okay. in the healthcare space. And from the lead record, I can click a button. And right in front of that person, that individual, and the rest of the members of their decision-making unit, I can now have this curated digital experience on the fly versus marketing going, okay, I think this is one of the accounts they're going after. We're going to try and do a list purchase, hopefully get some of the right people, and we're going to blast the account with yeah. some advertising. Hopefully, it's the right people, not just the, the person who manages the snacks and the snack bar there. Um, you have <laughs> exactly. the sales individual hitting the right person with the right content, with you know a relevant resonating experience. So hyper-personalization really is getting beyond the bu the buzzword that's at ABM. You know, everybody yeah. wants ABM yeah. from the enterprise organization to the restaurant down the street. They all have heard the buzzword. I want ABM. Um, right. but Which is account-based marketing. Right, uh, or yeah. you know, Ari's better marketing. Uh, <laughs> Ari's better marketing. <laughs> um, <laughs> I push what I call people-based marketing. It's getting mm -hmm. beyond this curated list of accounts and going, all right, well, you know, we might have predictive analytics so we can bubble up which of these accounts are in market and then yeah. pick two whales based on sales as input and we're gonna put a bunch yeah. of effort into it. We're gonna make right. two landing pages, widget co, their logo, what have you. People-based marketing is recognizing that as you move past the SMB space into mid-market and enterprise, you now have these you know, cross-org decision-making units. You've yeah. got the staff level individual who's going to kick the tires and want to sign up for a trial. You've got C-level interested in saving money, money, making money. You've got IT interested in security concerns as far as plugging this tech into whatever they're doing. And each of those individuals needs the relevant content in there. I've sat around tables yeah. before where somebody says, okay, we're, we're pushing into mid-market. Uh, yeah. What's the difference in messaging? Well, there is no difference. The difference is the audience that's hitting your website. And you only right. have this much space in your digital experiences. So the more you can actually hit somebody within the seconds you have them on the page with the relevant content experience, the more you have a win on time on site, time to close and the like, versus hoping somebody goes to your nav yeah. bar, goes to the industry, finds healthcare, somewhere in your you know, resource center, you might have something security related. You know, identify the individual, the account, and get beyond just simple uh, industry firmographics and get these relevant experiences. And then in a cohesive omni-channel uh, output, you know, and I know I'm droning on, I'll, I'll take a breath a minute, but the <laughs> typical marketing org you to a certain like size, when I'm talking about LinkedIn. marketing org, anyway, yeah, I'm if you have 40 person <laughs> marketing org, every one of those individuals has a task. You know, I do webinars, I do paid ads, yep. I manage the website. So somebody clicks an ad, that somebody spent a bunch of time around and they land in the website and the person that runs the paid advertising just uh, reports on click-through rates, maybe form fills, yeah. and not looking yeah. at that end-to-end -end holistic experience. People-based marketing is end-to-end, -end, uh, you know, the Coca-Cola model within arm's reach of desire before you know you want us, all the way yeah. to lifetime value and churn mitigation. We have the tech now in play to do that. It's a matter of how aligned can your organization get to allow you to execute in a cohesive fashion end-to-end. -end. <gasps> breath. So, breath. Okay, so let's back up a little bit and talk normal people talk. <laughs> I'm like barely, it's hard. I mean, this I'm so is deep my, in this. 
this is, but you know, it was funny. Bernie said, you know, Ari's really, really smart, Vivica. And I'm like, okay, I got my coffee. And I mean, this is what I do for a living. And I'm like, okay, I got it. I'm hanging on by the edge of my fingers. I got it. I got what you're talking about. <laughs> But let's, yeah, let's break it down a little bit more because some of the people on the call are sales, some are marketing, some are small business owners. Yeah. So we, so we, we, we really have an audience and some people are like, yeah. And other ones are like, huh? So uh -huh. Yeah. ABM account-based marketing, why was that? And why does it continue to be so exciting to people? I, I've never well, understood it, but <laughs> I think it's it, it, it. You know, it is the first like basic toe in the water on personalization, really. Yeah. Like you know, account based marketing. If I look at everybody hitting my website, some of those accounts are truly in market. Some yeah. of them are just surfing around because they're bored at lunch. You yeah. might have students, developers, and then garbage bot traffic. Right. Uh, EBM says, "All right, your sales org wants to close Widget Co." because they're a whale in the space. And if we could right. just close them, it could be a diving board in the bowling alley of, of that particular niche industry. It could be just a huge amount of revenue. Great, you know, they know somebody there. But the fact is, out of those people that we spend so much time trying to figure out, okay, these are the two accounts we're going to target this quarter, people hit yeah. the website all the time. So, right. you know, what you're doing and the efforts you're doing for those accounts used to be very heavy lift. Tons yeah, of yeah, manual yeah. work. We now have technology that allows us to automate and orchestrate at the account level um, very seamlessly with, with much less work to do. So if you're yeah. going to curate those, those experiences, that, you know, you are Widget Co., you're in this industry, yada, 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 at the account level, you can automate that for anybody. So why worry about just these two accounts for this right. quarter? Right. Um, and, and that's ABM. And, and the difference between ABM and PBM or people based marketing is recognizing that it's a bit watered down. You, you've gone yeah. from talking about product to talking about relevance based on industry and that account, yes. but you have to get to the next level of, okay, who is this individual and what content's relevant to them? Because you have seconds to capture their attention when they're on the site and try and encourage them to binge consume. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, okay, so backing up a little bit again. Um, mm -hmm. So we've got ABM. And then you were talking about SQLs and MQLs, I think. And so what is the difference and how, what does that have to do with people qualifiedly or ABM people mark? I can't even keep all the, the <laughs> ABM. Yeah. PM. I was, I read something somewhere that we should all stop talking in acronyms uh, yeah. for the good of the audience. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to test myself. I also um, had a, when we were doing on-prem conferences, I, I made a bet with a group of people the night prior to presenting somewhere that I would not say ABM. And each time <laughs> I said ABM, I would have to be held to doing a shot later. So it, it's hard. It's really hard. <laughs> it's early. It's really early to be taking a shot because you're in California, I think. <laughs> Correct. Right. right. So um, if we step back and think about, you know, demand, let's call it demand gen 1.0. Yeah. Uh, back when, you know, and I think most of the orgs are still there where they think the only way to hold a marketing group accountable is to measure them on the number of marketing qualified leads sent right. over to sales. Marketing right. qualified leads are a gamified metric. Any demand gen individual knows, oh, you want more MQLs? I can give you more MQLs and I'm yeah. going to hit my number, but you're going to yeah. have to sift through a bunch of garbage. Right. Um, we may have experienced a little bit of that yeah. at Van Gresso it, in the early days. <laughs> <laughs> well, because it's it's somebody deeming that, all right, if somebody signs up for a trial or a demo, mm -hmm. we're going to auto MQL them um, because I'm getting these content syndication leads from yeah. some vendor that says these are high intent leads. I'm going to, it, it turns out to be garbage. Um, right. As you fast track, you know, the 2.0 model was, okay, we got to get aligned. Now marketing's going to be held yeah. to the opportunity number. But still yeah. you have marketers in that realm going, what do I have to do with the opportunity? I manage yeah. a machine. And then I kick them over to sales. And that's the first point where there's people involvement and it's on them. If the opportunity yeah. isn't generated, that's on the SDR BDR. Right, the, right. The 3.0 people-based marketing model is recognizing that as marketers, we rep. touch everything. Yeah. S right. SDR and BDR. We touch everything in the end. There is okay. no SDR. Ah, sorry. I did it again. <laughs> sales development rep, business development rep. There we go. <laughs> Can I say CEO, CFO? That's okay. <laughs> you can say CEO. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> the technology <laughs> that we have now actually allows us to touch everything end to end. Um, yeah. You know, we're baking in intent data now, intent data from these third party providers or technology that we buy that tells us, okay, based on who you've sold to in the past six months or two years, these are the typical keywords they research. These are the typical behavior patterns. Yeah. You know, we used to do manual analysis of web traffic to find a golden path. Yeah. And typically what would happen is you'd find out, okay, everybody that we sold to signs up for the trial. So we're going to push the trial to everybody. And, right. and so, so what happens is you're, you're just wasting web space with a yeah. trial. It's only relevant for X percent of people hitting the website. You know, if you yeah. can identify the CFO hitting your website and get the save money, make money messaging in front of them, um, it's a win. And and, yeah. and that's the in-to-end people-based marketing executable aspect of getting beyond just ABM at a personalization level and right. getting hyper-personalized by persona. And again, I know I'm, I'm just spitting no, words out, but I'm so deep in this, it's hard to pull back. So Andrew asked a really good question. I mean, he he asked, "What is the technology that supports this?" We use HubSpot, but what um, what technology is that? One of the things that Nvidia does, or is do you... I, I'll get in trouble if I don't correct you. It's Nvidia. 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 Sorry, <laughs> Nvidia. I, I think there's people outside peering in, reminding me. Yeah. To, <laughs> but um, no. It can be any tech. It's about execution therein. You know, I, I like typically the problem with deep pockets is you end up with a MarTech slide that a VP or CMO likes to stand in front of at a conference yeah. and talk about like, look at our great tech stack. If nobody's championing every one of those bits of technology in there, it's it's a bunch of vaporware. You find right, out sixty percent right. of the tech stack is probably doing more harm. On the foundational level, you know, forget deep pockets as far as yeah. tech goes. Yeah. You you need some sort of intent identification at your disposal. You know there there are re relatively cheaper ones out there versus newer account matching IP information when they hit the website. Yeah. Something that can spit that matched information out and then plug it via an API into your Marketo, your Salesforce, uh, an yeah. abandonment capture tool like Hushly. Um, okay. But at its core, you need some kind of identification mechanism. And then you can go deeper as far as identifying um, historic models and, and whatnot. But for that relevance, by by for resonating experiences, you need at its core some kind of identification match mechanism. I'm glad you brought that up because um, it, the vaporware. One of the things we talk about, you know, so many. You've got your tech stack, you got your marketing stack, and you know, if you don't have some way of measuring what what software you're using. Yeah. It's a bunch of vaporware. You're wasting a yeah. ton of money. Um, one of the things we do is just in the CRM system, whatever our client CRM system, it's like, how did you identify this lead? How did you close this lead? And all of the, all of the tech stack is, and marketing stack is listed. And then they just choose the ones they actually use. And that's a really great way for companies to go, Man, we just spent fifty thousand dollars on this product or this software that no one has even touched, and yeah. here they're all using free LinkedIn. You know, <laughs> so right. it's. I think that's really important. Yeah, I've I've got to the point where you know there's a lot of tech out there that advertises fancy dashboards and metrics, but if you can't yeah. consolidate that data into one central location to really yeah. analyze things end to end, it's yeah. a pretty dashboard that nobody has time to to sync up with the rest of your life cycle. As well, there's a lot of tech out there right now that does double, triple duty to the point where yeah. I can pay 20K for this and unplug 200K over here and right. have the same thing executed and have all the data centrally managed. Yeah, exactly. 100%. And I like what Ted, hey, Ted, how you doing? I like what Ted says, you know, persona segmentation, it's 100% about execution yeah, and and so let's talk about that hyper personalization now. So we've got our qualified leads. We know we're supposed to be engaging with individuals, not necessarily with just the accounts. We've we've tweaked and we've worked it, and our folks have the training, and we're using the right technology. So what does that hyper personalization look like? Yeah, Ted hit it on the nail there. You know, you get everything identified and get these tracks put together, and and I always tout minimum viable product. Um, yeah. I think everybody goes, okay, we're going to push into industries and we're going to push into personas within these decision-making units. And next thing you know, you've got 15, 20, 25 different branches to manage. And it's this spaghetti monster mess. Yeah. Um, it's really about 
getting cohesive amongst your group. Like I said, if your marketing group is of a certain size, or your sales org is of a certain size, or the, the two aren't talking to each other whatsoever, you end up with, say, a digital banner ad experience that is super yeah. relevant at the individual level. And then they diving bo- di- uh, diving board right into this this pool of information that they're left to figure things out on yeah. their own. Uh, yeah. It's so the more you can automate and orchestrate in that, uh, the more, for instance, I tout my group, we're a services arm of sales, make the sales individual 300% more effective without them having to do more work. Yes. It's not going to help to say we paid a hundred thousand bucks for this product. And now you sales leader and your team have to learn how to use it and, and listen to a marketer trying to tell you how to sell. It's about automating and orchestrating on these experiences from that omni-channel perspective, taking traditional marketing levers and realizing that we're all in the end tied to the revenue number now and, yeah. and oh, automate. So. That hit you. <laughs> Here's a really good, but yeah, that, that probably a good thing. All you can see is your you mohawk. Still see the- <laughs> <laughs> I had a question, but then that distracted me. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I just saw the, I just saw the mohawk pop- popping up mm-hmm. from the top of the quote. Um, thank you, Maria. Shorter quotes. <laughs> hey, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> Another really smart guy. I don't, do you know Ian? I do not. Okay. You nice need to meet to you, Ian. With Ian. Yes. Awesome. He's, he's, he's very cool. All right. A couple of things here. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. Very good. So Bruce, other, other ways of exactly. using video. Exactly. So Bruce, Bruce hit it on the nail. Uh, you know, the past quarterly earnings is the first time NVIDIA has actually uh, made more in the data center realm. Uh, than gaming. And if you research NVIDIA, you'll see a lot of times in the Google autocomplete, it's referred to as a gaming software gaming. company. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No longer. Uh, the future is the AI, AI in the data center. Huge things happening. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit because I'm fascinated by AI. I think we we probably all are because we see it coming on board. Some people are scared of it. It certainly makes, um, oh, I remember what I was going to ask earlier. It certainly makes the salesperson's job easier if used effectively. So you said um, three, was it 300% something about salespeople, 300% more effective. So talk a little bit more about that. How can we make our salespeople 300% more effective? Is that AI? I just threw 300%. I, I just okay. threw 300% out there. You know, stati- most statistics, I, what was the quote? 58.3% of all statistics are, are just are, made up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but the fact is, no salesperson wants a marketer telling them how to sell. We no. are, are, everybody's chemically different. Um, somebody asked me recently, how do you get your sales individuals to adopt any sort of account-based orchestration or people-based marketing tactics. And what it is, is bite my tongue, shut up, have data in pocket, sit in a room constantly or sit shoulder to shoulder with these individuals yeah. and talk about their needs and, and what their phone calls are ending like, what their clothes lost, why you, content marketing, marketers, we typically like to make the latest, greatest shiny object and think, here you go, here's, here's a bunch of new content for you versus talking about where things are falling short in this buying life cycle. And, and addressing yeah. that appropriately. Yeah, yeah. So talk a little bit more to me about um, physically getting down and dirty, what needs to be done, what do companies need to do, what needs to be done. I'm like, take take us for example, we're yeah. in there, we, we, we have all the toys, we've got all the tools, we have the CRM system. We have a great sales team. We've got a great marketing team. How how do we how do we start functioning in the way? How do we start with this hyper personalization functioning? Yeah, typically Uh-oh. nobody likes this term, but I, I can't get rid of it. it no, it's not. A, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, uh, data dumpster <laughs> diving. Um, you know, you. <laughs> I think people too often, yeah, sorry, scary. People too often um, start with marketing technology thinking it's going to fix everything. And if you're just throwing garbage on top of existing garbage, you're building the leaning tower of pizza. Um, More often than not, I think organizations have pigeonholed themselves around a couple KPIs that somebody determined are the KPIs we're going to focus on. And as long as these KPIs are okay, um, we're good. Meanwhile, you have all sorts of metrics in there from time to touch to what people have referred to in the past as vanity metrics, which are no longer vanity metrics at the, right. the acquisition level because of the tech we have in play. 
and figure out where the gaps are to shore up. Once you yeah. get that shored up, then you start building the cool stuff on top of it. There's no yeah. reason to start trying to do account-based orchestration if your house isn't in order. Right. Um, and somebody asked me once, what what's the what KPIs do you track? What what's your one yeah. KPI? Yeah. I don't have one KPI. Why? You've got everything from conversion to velocity, acceleration, revenue impact, and every one of those. Even you know, with the lead class scoring system that we use now, we've yeah. abolished the MQL. We have a lead class system based on a combination of uh, a marketing-driven scoring mechanism plus intent data to bubble mm-hmm. up in-market leads, regardless of how they are, how much they've engaged with us. But yeah. even then, somebody will ask me, "Well, why are you talking about MQLs if we we abolished MQLs?" Well, because it's a great leading indicator, and it's one of the the 15 KPIs in yeah. the dashboard of data that I dumpster dive daily. <laughs> so, house in order. That's that's number one. Get your house in order. Perfect. Yeah. What's number two? Uh, at that point, it's, <laughs> number two uh, is the alignment. And I know it's a cliche term for some, um, but it's more than getting together in a, in a room with sales leadership once a month or once a week. Yeah. Alignment is truly uh, outside of that weekly meeting or integrated pipeline analysis. Uh, have a how you doing phone call with your sales leaders. Uh, even if you're not even talking about business from yeah. the marketing side, just asking, how's quarantine life going? I'm yeah. um, getting that in the in open communication because in a group setting, nobody's really going to tell you what's going on. Uh, you're going to look really at some cool. metrics. Um, you might have somebody that's really irate about something uh, speak up each week. And then you've got 15 other people that quietly sit on the call every week. So people come out of that meeting and, and just assume everything's okay here. Uh, yeah. It takes a lot of meetings one to one to figure out where the gaps are that have to be shored up. Awesome. If you don't, meetings. If, yeah, I know. If you don't put a foot forward there, though, when it comes time to actually execute in what have you, account-based marketing or people-based marketing, you're not going to get much of an ear from these individuals because it's just going to feel like another marketer coming and telling them what they should be doing and how they should sell. Not, exactly. hey, I'm here because I'm concerned. I want you to be successful because when you're successful, we make more money. You know, it's funny. We always talk about you know, one of our tagline is creating conversations from your connections or with your connections. But honestly, and, you know, we have to create real relationships. We need to create real relationships within our own companies. We have to create real relationships. Like you said, phone calls, we do a water cooler, a very casual water cooler. We have like cooking, our our company gets together and not me, because I'm really bad at it, but we do like we prepare meals together during our water cooler. So it's it's a really cool way of actually developing that human relationship. Whether you're a company of five, it's a little bit easier, 50. I mean, I've, I've got my org chart here. I'm like, okay, who have we hired today? What's their name again? Because there's folks I don't interact with directly. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, what's, what's his name and what does he do? And that's disrespectful. So having yeah. those one-on-one meetings and being able to engage within your own company, you'll have a much better idea because as we know, sales actually knows who the buyer is probably better than marketing does. And thank you for not using the term smarketing. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> well, because it, it, uh, it's, we're beyond smarketing, right? Um, yeah, we are. Engineering, product, customer success alignment. I don't even know what that word would be with, yeah. with marketing in the end. <laughs> well, as we were, the time went so quickly, one minute left. What do you, what more do you want to tell us in one minute? And you can use acronyms. <laughs> well, I think I, I would say the, the future here is uh, diversification of intent. Um, I think we need to get platform uh, neutral and not decide, okay, between these three. Uh, high-end bits of technology, one of them, we're going to flip the switch and it's going to solve everything. It's a matter of in right. organizational alignment and conversation and then identifying all those different intent uh, data aspects from third-party traditional walled gardens to on-site behavior to curate these experiences that address the phone call that the sales individual is having between the SD, uh, sales development rep talking to a prospect to the account executive trying to close to the customer success person trying to mitigate churn. Um, there's a lot there and, and it's about marrying to the data and then diversifying beyond that with any other data you can pile on top of it. So if you want 
a more thoughtful version of this talk where, where Bernie actually asks really good questions and allows Ari to speak. Um, <laughs> yeah, it felt like a yeah. test. <laughs> exactly. Bernie's great. Check out our podcast that Bernie did with Ari. Um, where can people connect with you? Obviously here on LinkedIn. Yeah, LinkedIn's the best. Um, connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, if you plug in that last name, you're, you're sure to find me. <laughs> yes. Can we, Maria, can we, can we put that last name in there? I know. Cause I was, I had, I had like Ari Capo in and I was like, come on, please, please pull up the rest of his last name. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's typical. My name's chopped off on every single one of my cards in my wallet. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Ninja trick for you. Um, on your, on your mobile device, there is the name pronunciation tool now. So if you go into oh, your, you're going to break it. You put my name in there. <laughs> it's going to break. You have 10 seconds. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I, just saying for the rest of us. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, Aristomenes Kapoyanis, but Ari is way easier. It's Ari, Ari is way easier. Thank you. Yep. Here it is right here. Look him up on LinkedIn. Thank you. And Facebook and Twitter and all the others. But um, thank you so much. It is. I have learned a lot today. My, my mind is just boiling over. Um, Really, these, really are, helpful these are all day conversations. And they again, are. anybody wants to connect with me, go for it. I yeah. connect with competitors. We're all fighting the same fight. And, and yeah. it's such an interesting realm right now that it's hard to encapsulate in this amount of time. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it really is a half hour, like a half hour is more than enough for most people. No, we could barely <laughs> get your name in, in a half hour. So <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you for being here today, putting up with thank the you so much. Issues. You are awesome. I'm going to go ahead and end the broadcast. See you in the green room. See you all.